All right, in this video, we are looking at probability. So a couple terms for us to define. An experiment is an investigation or a procedure that has varying results, right? There can be more than one thing that happens. The possible results of that experiment are called outcomes. And then a collection of one or more outcomes is an event. Finally, the outcomes of a specific event are called favorable outcomes. So let's look at this example with marbles. So you've got six marbles here and randomly choosing a marble from this group would be an experiment. Each marble itself is an outcome. So we've got these six marbles. So the outcomes would be choosing a blue marble, choosing a green marble, choosing a yellow marble, purple marble, red marble, or another green marble. So those are the six outcomes. Now, if we said, what is the probability of choosing a green marble, right? That would be our favorable outcome that we're looking for. And there are two green marbles. So the number of favorable outcomes would be two. So let's look at this example of spinning a spinner. So first we want to know how many possible outcomes there are. And we can see this spinner could land on six different things, right? We've got a one, a three, another one, a four, another one, and a two. So those are our six possible outcomes. What are the favorable outcomes of spinning an even number? So we can see here there are two even numbers, right? We've got one, two, and one, four. So there are two possible favorable outcomes, which would be spinning a two and spinning a four. Finally, in how many ways can spinning a number less than two occur, right? The numbers less than two are one. So there are three different ways that we could spin a number less than two. Each of those ones is its own possible outcome. All right, so let's look at this next definition, which is probability. The probability of an event is a number that represents the likelihood that that event will occur. Probabilities are between zero and one, including zero and one. So this diagram below shows us how likely something is and its probability. So if something has a probability of zero, it's impossible. It cannot happen, right? It's like flipping a coin that's heads and tails. And what is the probability of landing on some other side that doesn't exist, right? A coin has two sides. Or maybe a better example is rolling dice. And it's numbered one through six. The probability of rolling a seven would be zero. That's impossible. Okay, then as you move toward 50%, okay, so anything between zero and 50% is unlikely, right? As you near 50% and reach 50%, that's equally likely to happen or not happen, like flipping a coin. It's equally likely to land on heads or tails. Okay, and as you get over 50%, it can be considered likely to happen until you reach a probability of one or 100%, which is certain to happen. All right. <clears throat> so for example, let's look here. There's an 80% chance of rain, a 50% chance of thunderstorms, and a 15% chance of hail tomorrow. Describe the likelihood of each event. So with an 80% chance of rain, right, that's much more than half, much more than 50%. So we could say that is likely to happen. Now with the thunderstorms, it's 50% chance. So that would be equally likely and unlikely, equally likely to happen or not happen. And finally, with hail tomorrow, 15%, we would say that is unlikely. Since it was at 15%, which is Pretty close to zero, not close to 50%, so definitely unlikely to happen. Okay, now when you conduct an experiment, the relative frequency of an event is the fraction or percent of the time that the event occurs. So we can see here relative frequency is equal to the number of times the event occurs divided by the total number of times you conduct that experiment. So let's look at this example. Okay, you flip a bottle and record the number of times it lands upright and the number of times it lands on its side. Describe the likelihood that the bottle lands upright on your next flip. So we can see 
the number of times this favorable outcome occurs landing upright is two. And the total number of times we've conducted the experiment so far, we can see it's landed on its side 23 times plus two times landing upright, that's 25 times. So our relative frequency is 2 25ths. And if we wanted to write that as a percent, we'd get 8%. Now again, if we go back to our likelihood, 8% is very low. And so it is unlikely that it will land upright on your next flip. Okay, finally, this one says each turn in a game, you randomly draw a token from a bag and then replace it. The table shows the number of times you draw each type of token. How many times can you expect to draw a positive point value in 35 turns? So first we're going to look at our relative frequency here. So we have done a total of 20 turns here. And we want to find our relative frequency. So our favorable outcome in this case is a positive value. That's what we want to know. So if you draw the plus three points, that's a positive value. And the plus one points is a positive value. The negative two points is not a positive value. So we can look here. We've gotten positive three points 10 times so far. And we've gotten positive one point seven times. So that's 17 favorable outcomes out of 20 total. So we can again find our relative frequency, right? This is a percentage or a decimal. 17 twentieths, if we were to write that as a percent, is 85%. So our relative frequency has been 85%. So we can use that to project for if we were to do this 35 times, right? Basically, we want to know what is 85% of 35. And that would tell us kind of our, our likelihood here of drawing one of the positive tokens. So we just need to find 85% of 35. And we can use our percent equation for that. So A will be equal to 85% times 35. And we get 29.75. Obviously, you can't have a piece of a turn here or a piece of a positive coin. So we would say about 30 times. So if you were to take 35 turns in this game, you could expect to get a positive point value around 30 times.